everybody, it's Joey here and tomorrow we're gonna travel back from the UK to Malaysia um, during this coronavirus period so we got our luggage here let's see how the entire process is like bring it on okay now it's 5.49 a.m. so trains are not running so the only way to get to Cardiff Central is using the bus and there comes our bus so we're on the bus now the majority of the bus is empty Central. Buses don't run until London. The only option to go back home is using a train. Coronavirus, the toilets are closed currently and also they have yellow and black tape all over the chairs so that you only can sit one person at a time. This is our London train. There's a lot of people going back home as well. It's completely empty except for one person. Okay, people, we're currently in Cuttington Station. So we're gonna change the trains to Heathrow. It's very empty as well. Trains are open as you can see, so anybody can actually just go in. So we've arrived in departures. We are gonna go in, but I think there will be a boarding check first. We can go into the terminal. So we're now waiting to get the boarding pass. The current situation is that there are people wearing masks and some which are still not wearing masks. So it's a very different situation over here in Heathrow. So everybody's masking. So we just finished security, as you can see behind me. It's all okay. Oh, everybody's having like single file, single file. There's social distancing, so one by one, it's not like three people at once. Then the seats are vacant and making sure there's social distancing. This is the quietest I've seen in Petro. Everything is closed. So usually the shops over there will be open. None of it is open. All the shops over there are closed. Everything's closed. And down there is just all passengers. Tiny small amount of passengers just waiting for their flights. But nothing is open except the pharmacy. <laughs> so there's a social distancing system in the pharmacy. This is funny. There's only about 15 flights since 1 o'clock. Okay, we are in and this is our flight. Qatar. The reason we're choosing Qatar is because our Singapore Airlines, Singapore Airport is not letting any passengers transit. Doha is still available, so Qatar is still okay transit and stuff like that so that's why we're using Qatar and the thing is everybody is kind of ready and there's still actually a lot of people on the flight so that is very interesting I think it's really cool we're all practicing social distancing so like everybody's having a gap between them so it's really cool wow that's just cool that's nice. I think this is the cool thing. Everybody's there's a space in between each of the things. Everybody's like two by two. And my seat is over there. So. so. That was interesting. Um, I'm in the middle. So I doubt there's anybody on either side. And one more people just coming. I think I'll be alone here, most likely. So, food is served. 
London in Doha and everybody's just waiting to go out now. We're in Doha airport now in Qatar and it is at night and super empty. Everybody's coming out. This is supposed to be the big duty-free area of <laughs> And there's our flight, 7.15 a.m. Currently we have 7 hours here and as you can see it's completely empty except for a few people. We have 7 hours so I'm gonna edit my video. Woo. Okay, from this point onwards I'll be voiceovering. I had 7 hours to kill so I decided to watch America's Graduate Together live stream as I don't know if I would have a graduation or not. Went to the gate and found out that our flight was delayed for two hours and then we finally got to go in so it's goodbye Qatar. Inside the plane I had a window seat and everyone was dressed in PPE again and I had two seats to myself. They even gave pillows this time so I can rest nicely on the plane. The whole plane only had 22 people so most seats were vacant and we could have entire rows to ourselves. You could even change your seats as the plane took off. Seeing the Middle East was interesting to me as everything was so flat and the seats were so blue. On the plane, they saved us breakfast, gave us a pack with comfort socks, a toothbrush, earplugs, and an eye mask, and even lip balm. I had breakfast while watching Spider-Man, and because I had three rows to myself, I decided to lie down the entire row. When I woke up, there was a Kit Kat and some chips waiting for me, and soon they came and sprayed the entire aircraft. It was time to land. We were finally back in KL. We have just landed at Kuala Lumpur's International Airport, where the local time is 40 minutes past 9 in the evening, and the outside temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the seatbelt set has been turned off. Afterwards, we got our bags and walked out with the air attendant still in PPE. Everyone in KL had a mask. We needed to line up because this was the start of our health check for COVID. Each flight from one line, with the ones coming from Doha in the middle, there was a police in front of each line maintaining our organization, and we were mostly students coming from countries around the world. Soon, it was our line, so we followed the police officer to wherever she's leading us. We passed by all the closed shops in Kuala Lumpur International Airport, and we were heading to the trains. There's a police officer who told us to line up in single file and have a distance from each other. When it's our turn, we walked and went towards the bus area where we could see ourselves walking past. So it was indeed a bus, bringing us towards another airport terminal. In the bus, social distancing measures were taken as well and everyone stood in the box. We went down and we were at the international arrivals area. Then, we walked towards the immigration clearance and then through a thermal camera. There were lots of flights coming in from a lot of places, but mostly from the Asia Pacific. We needed to queue up to fill up the form. This says a COVID test will be done for everyone coming to KLIA, and if you're from East Malaysia, you cannot leave the airport building and have to transit in 24 hours. There were a lot of other signs and I finally got my form where I have to fill up general information and whether I have symptoms. After filling up our form, we had to line up to undergo a test for COVID-19. This sign says if you have symptoms, you have to tell the health ministry and if you've been to mass gatherings and chronic illnesses, you have to declare. At the counter, I had to fill up two forms and there was a table for daily monitoring which I have to do in my 14 days here. It also says all the details I have to do under home surveillance, so I waited for my turn to be called. After a smooth immigration, I was handed some quarantine guidelines and we filled another form to be handled into the National Disaster Management Agency of Malaysia. So we are now waiting for the bus to bring us to our quarantine area and we got a whole list of what to do, what to not do and if we have any symptoms we have to report. Just waiting for the bus. Then they collected our forms and brought us to collect our luggages. I found mine and we were let off where we lined up according to our biological sex where I was the only third female in the line. There, we were escorted to the exit to get our bus. We lined up at the start of the exit, and then we placed our bags in a row to be sprayed. Each person was handed a snack box, and the process of disinfecting bags started. So I'm currently in the bus. Yeah. They oh. gave us oh. dinner, and they also sprayed my bag, my entire big bag, with my luggage as well. So now, we're making the final adjustments, and we're yeah. off. Everyone sat on one seat for social distancing. In the snack box, I had a lychee drink, a croissant, a mineral water, and a mango pudding. They brought all the small luggages into the bus and then were off. The bus in front of us was a police bus, while we were in a firefighter bus. The police also escorted us throughout the way. Soon, we can see the amazing high-rise buildings of Kuala Lumpur and eventually reached our hotel in Bukit Bintang. 
the police were in front of us to wait for us and signaled us to turn into the hotel. There were members in PPE making sure the buses went to the right place and Hang Jibat and Hang Lekir came to make announcements. When we got off the bus, we had to line up and get our passport scanned. Then, they would give you a key. We went through the back entrance into a back lift where we were handed dinner. Only two people can enter the lift at one time. We are now waiting outside the rooms because all of us cannot go in yet. Whew! Mask free! So yes, welcome to the hotel room of quarantine. Huh? Um, let's see what the fridge has. Oh, we have a box, a mystery gift. Let's open the box. Mm. Multitudes of water. But we have a lot of different teas. Our oh. bathroom, hello. So we've got lots of shampoo, body wash, bar soaps and conditioners, toothbrushes and toothpaste, shower caps, lots of tissue and toilet paper. We've got a shower and a bathtub, but it differs among hotels. And in the wardrobe, we have an iron and ironing board, as well as a bathrobe and some house slippers. There is a queen size bed, um, we have a table, a mirror and some amazingly stunning views. Ah, oh, classic KL view, look at these. Usually the streets are packed, but now it ain't. It's not a Twin Tower, right? I don't think it is Twin Tower, I think. Okay. But anyways, views guys. Views for days. We are in the city again! Woo! It's 2.22am now. And we've got our dinner. We've got soy milk. Mmm. got an apple. It's a simple dinner because we came back at like one and we got a tuna sandwich. So wow, after traveling so long, I'm finally here. I finally have room and 14 days I have to monitor myself, make sure I'm healthy. If I feel unwell, I have to tell them. I've got to keep track of the progresses here. So tomorrow will be day one and I have to make sure that I don't have any fever, cough or shortness of breath. Up to day 14. I've got all my toiletries. I got three meals a day. So what I feel is this entire process was insanely organized and really smooth. Thank you Kementerian Kesehatan Malaysia for making this amazingly smooth for us. Majority of the people returning home are students. I've met people from USA, from flying from UK, flying from South Africa, flying from Paris and made a lot of new friends actually. We're all in this together and we're all just wanting to fly home to amazing Malaysia um, and thank you um, thank you to the government to helping, for helping us until now and making this so controlled and making sure the other citizens of Malaysia don't get infected from us bringing in potential COVID disease so this is amazing and I really hormat, I really respect um, we respect what has what everything that's been done for us. So yeah, this is Joey signing off, and see you guys soon. Bye.